Sure. <clears throat> right to me. Okay, we good? All right, we're live here on a Monday evening with Chris Frank. How's it going, Chris? Pretty good. But uh, just right away, I guess we'll get it out of the way. I told Bill when we got here, I actually was washing the car today and I got a message. Uh, I didn't realize I got almost black flagged yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so Cody Hartlob was kind enough to shoot me a message and be like, hey, was your receiver working and i just want to say to probably everybody else who was sitting out there thinking i was a jack wagon yesterday uh it was dead and apparently it died sometime after we started but uh yeah apparently bill was telling me everybody was listening on the radio that i had like uh i think they counted down to a quarter of a lap where i was going to get black flagged finally cody pulled up beside me and i'm like i don't know i'm just going to get him behind him all right so let's just put a little <laughs> clarification on this because if you're just joining us you know, obviously we raced yesterday at Bass. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to say it was probably lap 10. I believe the caution was for me. So let's just, let's just, let's just backtrack a second here. So Chris is a little nervous about this whole thing. getting black flag. He, he felt like he maybe was, uh, you know, holding up the program a little bit yesterday. Right. Uh, I, apparently I had no idea. I was just, <laughs> we were cruising around. I, I didn't re remember that the caution was for bill. And I'm like, what are these guys doing back there? Like, you know, we're, so there must be something good going on behind us. Cause I'm just sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting. And then it's just like, we came by and finally the flagger kind of pointed and I'm like, all right, they're trying to tell us something. Like, why aren't they on the radio saying anything? And sure enough, it was apparently me. Cody pulled up beside me and I couldn't with his wing panel and stuff. I couldn't see him, but I'm like, ah, I'm just going to get in line. I don't know what's going on. And we went green and I got to finish. So, Sorry to the officials and everybody that sat there through that one. It was my racy for Dodd, and I wasn't intentionally trying to be a jerk. You just got to put a battery in there once in a while. You just <laughs> you can't race without putting a battery in your race receiver. <laughs> it was even due this year. But. All right, so let's let's. <laughs> well, well, we got that out already. <laughs> Chris funny. was worried about that, but uh, let's let's uh, welcome everybody into the, to the show. Uh, we'll just talk about the, our weekend here real quick, then we'll get on to some Chris Frank topics, which I'm sure there's plenty of them. I see the, the chat's lighting up, so I appreciate everybody tuning in. Also want to say real quick here, there's no Heather downstairs. It's just me and Chris. That sounds kind of weird, but not really. She's letting me and Chris in control of the computer yeah. here tonight, so I'm going to do my best to not mess anything up. But I think we're I think she's taught me well as to what not to do. I had a whole list of rules myself of what I'm not to do or say. So hopefully this doesn't for his get wife. Trouble. Yes, uh, Ashley's here in the audience attending. I think uh, there's like studio audience tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, so uh, weekend recap just a little bit here. Obviously Friday night, or Saturday it rained out. Friday uh, we decided not to race. It was cold, and it's going to be you know hard on motors when it's really cold out. So I just decided you know take the night off. Uh, and, you know, uh, there was a, a small chance we could have raced Saturday, maybe, because it did quit raining early in the day. Yeah. You know, but we figured it was going to rain too much, which it did. Yeah, it was. Yeah. everything was saturated. Even, I think, Sunday when we got to the racetrack, how wet the pits were and everything, like the ground was definitely saturated through the area. So I think that's what would have hurt everybody racing Saturday, too. It was very, very, uh, very wet at Babs when we got there in the pit area, for yeah. sure. And then we raced at Babs yesterday, 4 o'clock race. It was at 4 o'clock? Six o'clock. It was four o'clock. Four o'clock race. Thirty. I think it was thirty-three four tens. Four heats. Mm -hmm. um, I had some some trouble in, in hot laps. Hot lap time trials. Our our black cloud seemed to just be hovering over the eight car this year so far. Okay, pill draw, which really didn't matter because it was a it was a group time trial. Hot lap time trial groups. How everyone slight. How everyone say they split the, the field in half, and. Uh, Lucky for me, I got a flat tire. As they were telling us to come to green, uh, there's a cool picture of it. I just uh, Chris just sent me and Seth of the tire completely off the, the bead on the inside going into turn three. So flat tire didn't even take the green in time trials. So right away I'm off the track. But props to Baps and everybody there. Since I didn't take the green, they 
let me go back, change the tire, and blend in with the second half of that group because I was in the first half. So I thought that was cool. They, they let me yeah. come back out. And then um, the staff at BAP's are really great, nice people. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that again. Like a jerk. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I uh, get my two laps qualified, missed the invert, long story short, in the feature. Um, Making some okay progress. I feel like we were we were pretty decent. And then I was actually uh, caught up to Chris and was going to attempt to pass him on the outside and got into the cushion. Car bicycled up uh, pretty uh, pretty gnarly, really. I think it, maybe Seth told me he saw a picture of the car with all the wheels off the ground. That's what it would felt like, really what it felt like. And then bounced a couple times. Anyway, I stopped. My race was over. And... Uh, not much damage. A couple of bent radius rods, some bent panels because of the mud. But all in all, I got off pretty easy. But the night was, uh, you know, wasn't that great. So how was your night otherwise? I'm going to talk about your night. Uh, everybody's, I mean, obviously, it did really well with the groove the other week, and everybody was super excited about that. They're like, oh, top five again today. And it's like, uh, I'm just wanted to make the show. You know, that I told everybody, you know, the last show there mm. last year, I made a lot of changes to the car and just missed making the race basically through the heat race. And I ended up having a valve train issue with the motor. We weren't able to go out. I should have started on the pole to be and stuff. And that, that absolutely haunted me all winter. So it was nice. I just wanted to come there. Of course, I didn't have the 358 ready. So we decided just to run the 410 and it turned into, you know, 30 something cars. And I was just worried about making it, but, uh, you know, time good in the heat. It actually had time four, so it put me that made like the invert of the heat race. So started on the pole. Um, I over tightened up like I always do for everything else. Uh, I fell back to fourth in the heat race, but, uh, you know, locked in through there and got to start 15th, finished 13th. You know, a couple guys went by, but got to race with some people. It was actually a pretty productive day for me. It was still a great day overall. I was pretty happy with it. All right, so for everybody who's tuning in, if you're not familiar with with Chris, Chris, uh, uh, 358 Racing. Yep. So it's just to tell everybody a little bit about your your progression here in the last, you know, last half of last year to this year. What you what you got going on? Uh, last year I planned to have the 410 a little bit before we ended up getting it. Got about midsummer there. Um, just kind of as an experiment, something to do. The three eight schedule. Sometimes there's weekends where we have two, three shows. There's weekends where we don't have any. Um, you know, actually with the loss of trailways, that was something we could always go hit before when there was nothing else going on because they always had that was the regular sprint car show there. So, um, long story short, uh, decided to kind of take a stab at it. Uh, you know, actually with you there, we kind of stumbled across this motor for sale more or less. Bought it in pieces. Had Gary Haymaker put it together against his will. <laughs> pretty much had to hold him at gunpoint to get that done but we uh we got it together uh had some success last year and was pretty excited about it and then just kind of wanted to do more or less this year i'm going to do kind of like half and half i think it's about 15 16 shows of each but uh you know i've been doing 358s up to this point and just wanted to give it a give it a shot and see who we could beat and honestly it was a little shocking so far who we were able to beat so yeah, so you kind of touched on a little bit there last Sunday, two Sundays ago, roll into the Grove, a Grove opening day. <laughs> Expectations were what? Uh, honestly, once we got in there, like I didn't get to walk the pits, but I made my crew guy Travis always checks. He's like, "There's 29 cars," and I'm like, "Oh, like." We fortunately we pulled a good number and it was more or less like, you know, I knew what the day shows. That's kind of what I planned around was, you know, it's probably going to be close to the bottom. It's not going to be up hammering the cushion kind of stuff, um, you know, which which is what kind of in your wheelhouse. I mean. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, a little more friendly towards what I'm used to. And I mean, just getting used with the 410 and what it does compared to the 3 d 8 especially um, big, big difference there. So it was, you know, just kind of in my head, a, a good chance of running well and then ended up being even a little bit more than that, kind of more than I expected. So top five. Yeah. Now I actually at one point was in fourth and I got a, a wheel up to little Freddie there one time and I hopped a tire going into three in the infield. So that kind of shot me back. But, uh, yeah, I think actually that next restart then when Lance went by. So it was kind of like, it was just neat being able to be up there and race with guys that you're watching the rest of the time. Yeah, so Lance is one of your idols. I, I, from what I remember, right. I mean, yeah, no, I was, <laughs> Always been a big Lance fan, and that was just kind of neat. And it was just kind of like, ah, 
you know, if anybody was going to sneak by underneath me, it was like son of a bitch. Like he was, he's pretty good at hitting the bottom there too, I guess. So. That's cool. I mean, yeah. I was, <laughs> we got, we got to watch your race and I was rooting for you. You really, really ran a good race. And you actually, I thought you could have, you know, got the third for sure there. You definitely had the car to do it, but, uh, I mean, a lot of guys would have been happy with a fifth place finish. Oh yeah, no, I, that, you no, know, nothing short of anything there. I honestly, we ended up re making the invert through the heat race and did the redraw, and I got it. I pulled a nine and started ninth that day. And honestly, I was like, if I could have stayed ninth or tenth, that had been just as exciting as what it ended up being. But obviously, you've got to be able to pass some cars and be pretty good there. Yeah. All right. So I got some notes here because you guys, if you've watched me in the past, always make some notes. So I got I got my little cheat sheet here, and uh, a couple things I, I thought maybe we should share with some some of our fans here because people are tuned in and people might watch this later. Um, I know it's a hot topic around our race shop, the double zero. So I mean, I know not everybody probably knows what why there's a double zero. So tell everybody I'm, why there's a double zero. What's the number oh. significance? I mean, I've ran that since literally I started go karts in '97. Um, before we got into dirt track racing and everything else, I was kind of a NASCAR kid kind of thing that was really popular, like mid '90s up through the early 2000s. I really followed NASCAR, and it just so kind of happened. Even back in the day, it was Winston Cup in the Bush Series. Uh, happened to be flipping around on TV and literally watched Buckshot Jones win at the Milwaukee Mile back in the day, and he was double zero. That was really my first sight of seeing that number from being a you know watching nascar everything else i just thought that was really peculiar i didn't under understand it didn't make much sense to have two zeros and that just kind of always stuck with me buckshot jones that's a blast from the past and mm -hmm. old, roy, <laughs> old roy jones i actually have i in my old trailer i had it up for the longest time i actually have a side off of one of his cars my dad and i we went to a, a bunch of nascar races stuff back in the day before we got into kart racing yeah all right, so here's something that I'm curious about. Since you're you're heavily involved in the 358 race, and then it's you know what you this coming season, the 358 start this Friday at the Grove. Yep. Like, what are you thinking? You know, last year you had a you had a fast car mm -hmm. at the Grove. Almost felt like you know some things went differently. The outcomes would have been a lot different toward the, at the end of the year. Yeah, as I keep finding out with the 358 stuff, the the handmaker guys have been great, and Gary really like. Even there Sunday after the race, you know, he kind of gave me, I guess, a couple pointers or observations, and it was like, ah, oh, man, like he's just always right. Like he's Is one that of those annoying guys. Or what? Ah, it, it's not annoying. I try to get him to help more than he wants to sometimes, and sometimes he doesn't want to like. He doesn't want to be like the crew chief or anything, and I do a lot of the work on my car myself. But like, I, I look for guys for insight. Yeah, I mean, I ask you questions and stuff when we think about the racetrack and things. And you know, it was one of those things I bought. I used an oil pan last year and put it on the motor. And literally the first two shows at the Grove, we were fighting an oiling problem. And it was actually, normally with a sprint car engine, there's that tank on the front and it's a dry sump system. Most of the oil should be in that tank. A lot of it's not in the pan. Well, we were actually like checked it one night at the track. There was probably five and a half quarts in the pan. So then it was pushing out of the motor. I was smoking. I literally, I made the features, fortunately, the first two shows at the Grove, but we start and parked. And I had two last place finishes to start the season there, which it kind of helped me a little bit with the invert and everything else um, to get going. But then, I mean, and I was able to still get back in the top five in points till the end of the year. And the car was pretty consistently good. Um, just been kind of working with what I have. I really make this year and that's been the 410 car so far. So it's been, it's been on point and everything's been good. And I really look to make not a lot of changes. I think the new tire, I favor a little bit think i've used what i learned so far we should be good with the 358 still too for bugs the grove for it's as bad as like the <laughs> story did you uh, yeah <laughs> if you're watching you know cool buddy get john west <laughs> well, you, you got your bugs work, you know. Yep. Tell us about why. So, uh, Dowdy's pesky. My for thirty. 
we went it way probably actually kind of stepped up to help run keep it afloat like i said they've been in business five years so established business kind of that a lot we go COVID actually work and licensed state to spray like that so uh kind of took a run at her down you know i i my business and everybody's but uh and stuff and everything down here be successful uh you know definitely gives us business and things that's cool take bugs Chris comes out of my mouth. She's chocolate. She melts in my <laughs> We get it. So, oh. That's a shirt today. I wasn't going to wear the shirt. To bring a koozie. Totally bought We have a good connection. Pardon this interruption for technical difficulties. Yeah, so I guess we're buffering here. I didn't know we were. Keep going and then we'll repost. So okay. The connection's good. All right, well, if we're having some no problems, I'm not. Time's up. Back to the. Lots of comments here in a, in a little oh, bit. Cool. But Well, it won't be yeah. long, and the audio will be fine. So, uh, thing that I wanted to ask back to the three, there's a lot of guys I noticed are moving up, and moving up from the three. Even last year, but this year, it's like you know, with the Stricklers or that. Is it showing interest? The biggest who made this, what led to that, and mm-hmm. I always kind of figured on doing the three day. My plan five, and then um, eight things anticipated with that right away, but the four ten in the so sad. Anything else, I just always just kind of see shake out and abstain from money and the races I got to run so far. And what tires and everything. Much gate. have, but that's. Also, to be honest, <laughs> this uh, Clinton County thing, I, would, I mean, the, the night diamond, it was in there, but I think um, come out and stack up with some of those guys. Tell, I mean, you, know, you can't wait forever. And I, you know, just with the if you're going to go. You know, basically, what I can, but I mean, obviously, we got to, but uh, definitely not. I'm doing really well for, yeah, for sure. I agree. I mean, about it too. You, you went about the right way. I'm got together, race to make some money. When you, when you look back, on a, I, it's uh, not that people with the eight they love the, the feedback on Facebook. There, we into the track at Lincoln. Three of the eights are pre-staging and everything. Come to just see the four. Probably in this. 
moves up anytime it's up new photographers are there they're watching you know and fail kind of got an extra especially that week at the grove coming in and fit like i feel like the expect pushed up i'm trying hold of it you know what i mean like it's it's coming in point like I mean, honestly, rallying and things like that. Uh, actually, you were fourth. You're starting to pull. Like, <laughs> in that. No, but it's like, I feel like everybody's definitely watching and stuff. The big thing where it's like, you know, you. Laps. Exact same race car lap. Lap. Pretend so. It sounds. The thing I can tell you is like when we went out there with that head to run that. I never. Car. Eight motors act. Steel versus. The cars from the start I go straight. I don't want to clap. Whatever else you don't got that I was doing when I was. But it's out actual race car drivers. You know, there's guys out here that. The radio. Who you were supposed to? They repeated, and then they repeated, and then eventually they counted you down. From Chris, you have one lap to him, black flagged. Three quarters, half, quarter of a lap. And if you don't get in line, you're black flagged. So I thought that was pretty comical. <laughs> People didn't know what was going on. Chris just couldn't hear the, the yeah. tower. So Natalie, if you're watching. Thanks Sorry. For, uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> wasn't on purpose uh, by all means. I I didn't want to rock the boot there at all. Do you think the four tens can help your three fifty eight racing? Ah, I think so. I mean, I'm I'm kind of anxious to go to the Grove, the the car that we're taking this Friday. I'm gonna fire it up tomorrow night. Hopefully, uh, it was the car that I flipped at Baps last year and ripped the whole front end off of it. So. Uh, I guess we'll find out if Kenny Edkin did a good job on that or not. Yeah, he's good. screwed me on this deal here, but uh, <laughs> I, I think it will be. I'm, I'm anxious now to see the difference. It was hard last year with some of the racing we did. I didn't really ever like run Friday and one Saturday and the other, but I feel like you know the stuff that I've learned with the tires should help. Yeah, well, that's good. Um, Go karts to sprint cars. I mean, that's a pretty big job, right? Oh yeah. Do you feel like you should have made that move sooner in your career? Looking back on it now, I wish I would have. I think it could have sped me ahead in the process as to where you can where you can get and what you can do. But I mean, just sometimes you kind of got to go with what you have. And it really like looking back on it now, I can remember you know sweating it trying to spend two hundred dollars to buy a whole set of tires. Where now we're spending. Three hundred and forty dollars for one tire. dollars for one tire, and it's like, well, you got to put two brand new ones on the back and go out and burn them both off in one night. So it's it, it's funny to me sometimes looking back at the mentality of like, you know, you could replace a whole body on a cart for I think one hundred and fifty bucks, and now it's like, you know, you have a bad day and tear up two wings and you're out a thousand dollars. Yeah, it's it's definitely changed. So if you're a go kart guy right now and you're watching this, what would you say to that guy if, he, if he's thinking about? Eventually moving up, what, what do you think he should do first? Like, what would his, what would you do first? What would you buy first? Mm. The biggest thing I would say, I mean, I, I was always around the sprint car racing, and I went and you know helped some people. Um, man, I'm going to even go way back to like I remember being in the pits in the infield at Lincoln on top of Bill Albright's trailer, and that'll date it. I can remember even like Dick Smith and some of the guys that helped me get started when we got going. Um, just go and try to help some of these guys you know they, everybody always needs help bill just had to recruit some people whatever else i mean really like the first couple of times we went racing i'm like 
you know, the the pace of the show is so much faster because you're not spending all freaking day like 12 14 hours at the races which is what we used to do with the cart stuff but uh you know just go get involved and see if you can get some help and you know do tires for somebody like really learn about it like it's there's a it's, it's a huge step from the, the go-kart stuff obviously and I, I like working on the car and doing that kind of stuff but some of the guys you know it's i think they have that perception of just showing up and driving right and there's a lot of stuff to take care of every week that doesn't end up coming back to bite you in yeah. the ass all right so i'm looking through the comments here i just scrolled to the top <laughs> and of course we got nasty nate in here he's making some comments something about hit him in the Grab another gear, roll into victory lane. <laughs> but the one comment that sticks out here is Jeremy Zerfoss says, mm -hmm. Chris Frank outruns Billy again. <laughs> All right. So let's just talk about or Clinton County. I'm going to sit Um It was a good race. You, you end up second. Yep. Um, podium, by the way. He was on the podium. I'm going to stress that podium word in case there's anybody <laughs> out there watching. <laughs> podium how you like that anyway um it was a fun race we have a good yeah. time right so we're at work we go to clinton county uh you were there for the first one right yes i had excited to 358 at the first okay race. so it's been your second race there yes and uh super slick track you win your heat race mm -hmm. so you timed good right every time trials that day time yes. hot laps time hot laps yep um feature time rolls around you know, we're we're trucking longer and nobody really had anything for the thirty two car. Blaney, he was pretty much gone. He was a whole other league, right? Yeah. And he's then an all star. He's an all star. And then we get down to the closing laps and I'm in second and you're in third. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? Uh, so I could tell, I mean, it I think my car was definitely a little better than yours and you were definitely pushing because that was it. I mean Blaney was never the whole way out, and obviously we could kind of see like he was always like at the end of the other straightaway. I'd say it. Yeah. So I feel like you were trying to make a run at it, and just started slipping a little bit. And we actually had some clean track, and of course, you know, I was you know hammering the bottom trying to get down through it, and it just so happened. I mean, I think I peaked on you one time off of two, and you got a really good run down the front straightaway, but then you kind of got in a little too hot. Yeah, and was able just to get under you off the back of two there and get down through it. I mean, that was that was just fun. And the one thing I will say with racing with the four ten stuff, like I, I feel like there's a lot more respect on a racetrack with this than than some of the other stuff. And there's a lot of inexperience in the three D eights, and there's a lot of new guys, like you said. But like, yeah, you know, I spent most of the race yesterday going back and forth with Tyler Ross. Um, you know, got to run a little bit with Cody Hartlob, and we were both coming basically out of the three D eights and kind of going back and forth. And it's 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 a different type of racing. It yeah. for sure is. And like I said, Derek Clinton, I mean, we were, you know, all but like my left, your, your left front was kind of tucked in between my right side tires. I mean, we were, we were tight. Yeah. But, it, was, it was fun. I mean, yeah. it, it was a good race, clean race. Mm -hmm. um, tracks like that definitely even things out. You know, it, it, mm -hmm. it can take a lot of the equation out of the, you know, the worst power and it's coming oh, yeah. down to set up and driving and, and, uh, if you haven't been to Clinton County, I would recommend it. If you if you have the opportunity to go check it out, oh, two yeah. four ten races this year. A little shout out to them guys up there. They got a nice facility. Got a cool thing going on there. Oh yeah, and I mean it's definitely like, I mean it's it's not a big grand DC mode type of place, but I mean it's for real like hardcore short track racing. And I feel like you know with with the area down through here, I mean with the exception, I mean really the shortest track we get to race on now is Lincoln. Yeah, and you know there's really no like. Path Valley doesn't have shows for it anymore. Obviously, Trailways is gone, but like, you know, Clinton County is a nice little tight place. And I mean, there's racing the whole way around the racetrack the whole time. Yeah. Well, let me just scroll down through the comments here. Troy Savage was wishing you would have wore your Clinton County shirt. <laughs> so shout out to Troy. <laughs> uh, that was a brilliant idea, by the way, the, the t shirt. If you don't know, uh, still have it. Still have it. Chris made a custom t shirt with him passing me. Mm -hmm. and, and run down on the back. So he's, he's right. got the it's all the QZ. Never he's got the QZ too. So uh, let me just scroll down here, look through these comments quick. Put uh, Chris Lynn check it in. He wants to be like us when he gets older. Turn two terribles at the top of the hour, eight o'clock. Check them guys out. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So you know, this coming weekend, the Grove opener is it for you guys? Yes. Uh, what's anything else Saturday too or no? 
No, I I think Lincoln may have them. I'm not 100% sure. I'm probably, at this point with the 358, I'm going to do the full Grove uh, point schedule there. And then the summer series, which is like two at the Grove, two at Lincoln. And I think we have one of them at the Big Diamond, which will be pretty cool. It's a standalone 358 to a Big Diamond this year, which will be neat. Um, and then kind of, I think Susquehanna has a few, or BAPS has a couple 358 shows. And then uh, the rest I'll kind of do with the 410. Yeah. Um, the summer series is that they go to Path Valley this year? No, there we went from I think we had three shows there last year. I think one got rained out to now we have. I don't think there's a sprint car at Path Valley, anything above a 305 this year. Well, that's a shame, right? I mean, that place is awesome to race at. Uh, it was a, it was a shame they didn't get more cars. We went and tried to support all the shows last year, but I think you know, 13 and 17 cars the one night, literally. I mean, we were there. They did a really good job. I mean, we had rain on the way. We started it rained again. They got rain back in. I mean, they kept us there and got the program in, even with I think they run like micros and stuff. There's probably like five or six divisions, but you know, they always did a nice job getting us in and out of there. So we do have a comment here that says um, you should get rid of the three fifty eight and get another four ten. Is that something you would entertain eventually going all four ten racing? I mean, if it was economically feasible, but that's the thing. Like I think. There's been a lot more interest in the 3VD8s, but to sell the 3VD8 to get another 410, not exactly. Dollar for dollar. Yeah. I mean, it's not the same. You know, even what I have wrapped up in the one that I put together and kind of did it on the cheap, it's still more than I would ever get for selling my brand new, fresh 3VD8. Um, And I mean, I think a lot of times, sometimes two people don't think it's going to be, you know, now we go all 410 racing. Hey, these wheels that I had the last two years aren't good enough. This used rear I'm going to put in this car right. isn't good enough. It's it it eats a lot more components. I mean, even just that day show at the Grove, I was I just thought, hey, in case I go out here and screw up, I'm going to put my wing on from last year. And I mean, it took a couple hits. I was pulling pulling some dents out of that thing, and it's like you know, I I do have like three top wings now, but at the same time, it's like you know, the stuff's hitting you a lot faster too. Yeah, <laughs> so. that's for sure. Things take a lot more abuse to drive line. Yes. Of course, the wing, like you said, the body. I noticed today in my car, a lot of the the paint chipped off. I think it might have been from the Grove last week being so rocky and what have you. But um, another question for you, the Chris Frank, I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> You're kind of a big deal. So what, what what's that about? I know that there's a story behind it. Do you, would you like to enlighten us a little bit about the whole, you know, why people say that? Mm-hmm. So... It's always like I was quote a lot of movie lines to do <laughs> stupid stuff, and sometimes it goes. No, over. we don't. Never, never, never. And my wife, God bless her, she she's not as well versed in funny stuff as me. I think this is we've been married a little while now, and she's finally starting to understand sarcasm. So that's good. <laughs> but uh, it just so happened back in the day, it was uh, Anchorman. If yep. anybody's familiar with that. The movie was out. It was popular. It's so, funny. So Chris is, I think, have has seen just about every movie ever made, from what I gather, right? If it's worth seeing, I've probably seen it <laughs> or not. <laughs> <laughs> I like weird stuff, <laughs> but uh, you know, of course, that movie was out, and my wife, I actually met because um, her nephews raced carts. I was racing carts at the time, and it was just kind of being myself. And maybe she didn't get that at the time, but obviously she stuck around, so it wasn't too bad. But I was kind of joking with her and said, like, oh, you know, like, she was always at the races, but she was just there to watch, like, the little kids race. Like, my nephews now, they're, like, 17 and 19 or 20 at this point, but they were, like, we little guys running junior sportsman champ at the time. And it was just kind of funny because she didn't really pay attention to anything at the races. So yeah. I was trying to explain that I was, like, you know – I literally used the line, I'm kind of a big deal at the go-kart races. <laughs> and she was just like, pff, 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 like, you're full of yourself. This is ridiculous. And I was kind of like, well, it was I meant to be funny. but she, Then the rest is history because yeah. she's still with you today. She, she figured it out. She realized. <laughs> we all think you're kind of a big deal. <laughs> You put it on, and, put it on the certain, shirt and it worked out. In certain ways. In <laughs> certain ways. Uh, okay, so we got a comment here, a question from Mike T. What do you think about USAC East Coast going from 360s to 410s? Would you try a few of these races? Hmm. Um, 
What do I think about that? I'm really surprised about that move. I didn't. I kind of thought the the 360 side of it was kind of taken off the East Coast. From what I hear from people and what I see at the business, a lot of people are, go from it's like a natural transition to go from the wingless 600 to a wingless sprint car, which was always lacking here in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. East like East Coast wingless, these guys would go from say cuts down to USAC East Coast. Um, is going to the four tens, I'm not sure where that came from, other than maybe trying to be on the national level. You know, USAC yeah. is four tens. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's gonna help them or not. I feel like a lot of these guys are kind of like the three with the eight deal. You know, they in a way, in other words, they 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 got their money invested in that motor. Yeah. You know, to 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 sell the three sixty and buy a four ten is probably not going to be equal. No, and that's that's one thing we see with the three with the eight stuff, and that's just it. Like, it's it's definitely not apples to apples, and that's the unfortunate thing. Like now, there's a bunch of guys selling three sixties to go that route, and it's only going to depreciate those motors. Like, you know, now you're going to have to give it away just to give it yeah. get it out of it and it's not even going to put you anywhere close to a 410. The second part of that question, I, I'm not interested in racing with an auto wing at all. I've tried it one time. I did a, a practice at Lincoln. It did not end well. I crashed. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. I don't know about you, Chris, but it doesn't interest me at all. Not one bit. Yeah, I mean, I, here's the other thing about that. I feel like a lot of our tracks here are, unless you're doing it all the time, their tracks are just so big that I'm not sure that it would interest me at all, you know, just because of the, the speed you're carrying and what have you. But um, anyway, uh, Nate Dacker says Ashley could be his vice could be his vice president, whatever that means. I know we have some uh, audio problems where we he is, did. He is an entrepreneur. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> Nate Dacker did want me to ask you um, about Halloween this year, or somewhat. Kind of Halloween question. Halloween. You dressed up as a werewolf. Oh, you know that was actually after the. Fact. Was it after Halloween? That was my original costume. Then I ended up making a change, <laughs> but the werewolf came in handy. You know, sometimes you gotta scare kids straight. <laughs> it just kind of worked out. So if you don't know, we all kind of hang out a lot. Me <laughs> and Heather and Chris and Ashley and Nate and you know we all get together and have a lot of fun. And uh, Chris dressed up as the werewolf and scared Nate's stepson. Mm-hmm. Uh, with with approval, we made sure it was okay first. It was okay. It was kind of planned. I think Nate was more excited about it than even I was. I agree. It was actually uh, recorded <laughs> on the house camera. So, yeah. um, let me just scroll through the comments here. But I think we're we're pretty good here. Um, yeah, I think uh, you're off to a good start for sure. And. You know, three for eight racing is going to be tough. I think in the Grove with a lot of fast cars this year. Yep. Now I think and just watching there on Sunday, I mean, Kyle Keen had a hell of a run. I think he was out front, and looked really good there. It was a damn shame to see him get caught up there and get wrecked. But I mean, another I was, guy with a four ten. Yeah, Kyle well, Keen's going four ten racing as well. Ten racing too. Uh, but yeah, Doug. Doug's always tough. You know, I, I spent a lot of time around those guys, and I mean, they do everything to win. And that was. You know, with him, Derek, you know, some of the other cars at DeGrove, Cody Fletcher's getting pretty fast at DeGrove. Yeah. Um, of course, you got Dylan Norris and McClellan's car. You know, there's a pretty pretty stout field of the 358s, and honestly, there's a lot of new ones. Um, I was kind of glad I wasn't there at the first night at Link. It looked like a lot <laughs> of the new ones got sorted out there. But, uh, yeah, I, I think there's, there's definitely a lot of good competitors in that. And I think as – I think I told somebody at the races there, it's like as good as the – 410's been going. I'm kind of scared to go to the 358. I'm probably going to end up looking terrible in that thing. Yeah, you, you're kind of setting yourself up a little <laughs> bit, ain't you? I mean, well, that's just, I never think everybody's like at the expectation level, like, oh, he's going to go back to the 358 and kill it. And I'm like, <laughs> I'll probably go out there and spin out with uh, a dick. So, nah, I think you'll be all right. It, it'll probably, if I had to guess, it might help you as far as slowing things down. You know, I it might think so. I be able to so. fine tune stuff maybe a little better. Yeah. But, um, uh, well, I think that's. I think we're pretty good on everything. I just scrolled through the comments. I know there were some some audio issues here. We apologize for that. It will be broadcasted and and uh, be posted again. Audio issues won't be there, but I uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. Chris, thanks for coming on. Not a problem. Good to go. Um, 
if you still want to stay on YouTube, check out Turn Two Terribles tonight at eight o'clock. Check them guys out. I'm sure they got a lot of commentary about the weekend and uh, what went on there. I seen them walking through the pits doing live live yesterday. Yeah, I think he got me at one point, and I didn't realize that the one guy had his phone up. So I don't know if that was <laughs> good, bad, or indifferent there. Um, yeah. So. Well, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for coming on. Have a good week. Uh, like, subscribe. Chris has T-shirts, and he's got some mini wing panels. Yeah. Dave, Chad Baker at RRI just got me the mini wing panels. We do only have large and extra large shirts left. The other ones, we are probably going to be getting a new batch here soon uh, of new shirts for this year, basically. Uh, trying to come up with a concept for that shirt there, so we'll see. But, yeah, you know, as I'm like – transitioning into 410 stuff it's like i see why people go through merch so yeah I try to get some stuff there. so a couple of late questions here i just i'm just scrolling through here <laughs> what do you think about the one inch wicker bill so far um have you noticed i mean i know you raced two inch wicker bill last year what do you think about this year have you, have you t could you tell a difference i mean it, even with the 358 it was always kind of uh i think a lot of guys would go to it and it would actually hurt us you know because it was we're so still used to like, and that's what got me for a little bit too, was the old three by five wing. You know, we were going to bigger wickers and doing stuff. We had less wing where, you know, the 410, I mean, I even like, I think they're out at Clinton, some of that stuff. We had big wickers on and stuff like that. But, you know, so far, I honestly can't say I've seen a difference. I'm still getting used to the 410 a little bit as that's kind of been going through. So um, it'll be interesting to see. Maybe that'll kind of make the 358 racing a little bit better. We're normally on the slower track in the night. And if guys can't, have the big wicker bills on, maybe it'll make for better racing. Three fifty eights can still run a tall wicker bill, right? I believe so. so. Yeah, so that'll that'll be interesting because you guys yeah. are you're on a slicker track, and the one inch wicker bill should help it from rubbering, but the two inch might cause more rubber. Well, yeah, and that's you know with us racing intermixed all the time with the four ten stuff, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the track. And I think the other thing too was last year we were still on the old tire. And right. now the three dates are all going to be on the new tire. The four tens are on the new tire. I've definitely noticed a big difference. Is, you know, just even watching Lincoln the first couple of races, it'll be interesting to see with everybody. You know, if we get sixty cars in one night on that new tire, what it's going to do to the racetrack. So I think that'll make a big difference as well. Yeah, only time will tell. So we'll see. So, mm -hmm. all right. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. Like, subscribe, comment. I'll read the comments. I know there's always more comments. I'll, I'll continue to read them. And uh, you guys have a good week. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. And then we'll see you next time, everybody.